welcome to the Coach Tyler Show. Hi there. Welcome back to another episode of the Coach Kyle Show. Um, we oftentimes start this show off by saying, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. A very important statement. Um, it's very, you must understand that greatness is not an external thing. Um, it's an innate thing. You were born with greatness and because you were born with his image and in in his likeness. So you don't have to you don't have to look for greatness outside. So it's important to understand that statement. Nevertheless, remember this show, we talk all things soccer. This is a soccer show. Uh, but the ultimate goal here um, is to or the vision of this show is to inspire and to impact uh, the lives of young people to live out their purpose. Um, I'm an example of that, not, you know, like doing stuff, but it's important that if you're blessed with a gift and you, you have a design, you have a heart uh, to improve the lives of other people or give them the opportunity uh, because most people won't because of varying things. Um, you have to step out sometimes. So you cannot teach what you don't do or you cannot teach what you haven't learned. So it's important uh, for you to understand that this is a show with a difference. It's the impact our young people. It's to inspire them uh, to live out their purpose. They will need it. In these very uncertain times and you see things happening and you really don't have the answers for so they will need purpose to truly navigate uh, through these very difficult times so we want to we want to give you the opportunity to uh, to ask questions for the past couple months weeks um see sonia and already good night sonia make sure that you are sharing make sure that you're telling your friends telling your colleagues um, that we're in we'll give you a chance to get in to tell your friends to get situated because we we talk a lot on this show about different things about things on the field we talk about things off the field so it would be a good time for you to to ask um, these difficult questions so that we could get some answers. So feel free to share your questions. Um, we're on Facebook Live, obviously. We're on YouTube. So ask your questions so we can, you know, we can both learn something tonight because this is the purpose, right? We talk about impacting and inspiring. is about growing. And you only grow through learning. And when you ask good questions, that happen. But before we we jump in uh, into into the the meat of the show, as they say, uh, as we oftentimes promise you scores and stats, uh, it's a wall of met. So we'll be right back. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and all athletes. Welcome to another segment of Scores and Stats. As we conclude with the group stages of the 2022 annual NWSL Challenge Cup, a total of six matches were played. So let's dive in with match play from Saturday. North Carolina Courage versus Washington Spirits. That game ended in a 2-2 draw. 
North Carolina goals were scored by Bebera Oliveira in the 45th minute with a penalty and Malia Nicole Berkeley in the 52nd minute. Washington Spirit goals were scored by Ashley H in the 15th and 17th minute with a penalty. Next game, we have Gotham FC versus Orlando Pride. That game ended on 1-1 draw. Gotham FC goals were scored by Christy Mewis in the 45th minute with a penalty. And Orlando Pride goal was scored by Gundler Jalander. Hopefully I said her name right in the 10th minute of the game. San Diego Wave versus Old Rain. That game ended a 1-1 draw. San Diego Wave goal was scored by Alex Morgan in the 45th minute, also with a penalty. Old Rain goal was scored by Ali Watt in the 13th minute. Kansas City FC versus Chicago Red Star. That game ended a 2-1 victory for Kansas City FC. Kansas City goals were scored by Alex Laura in the 50th and the 76th minute. Goals were scored by Kristen Hamilton. Chicago Red Star goal was scored by Bianca St. George in the 52nd minute of the game. Houston Dash versus Racing in Louisville. That game ended a 2-1 victory for Houston Dash. Houston Dash goals were scored by Michelle Price in the 24th minute and Ashley Prescott in the 35th minute. Racing Louisville goals scored by Jaylene Howell in the 29th minute of the game. Next game, we have Angel City FC versus Portland Thorns. That game ended in a 1-0 victory for Angel City. Christian Press scored in the 29th minute with a penalty. Exciting games. Semifinal games will be on Wednesday, May 4th at 8 and 10 p.m. Old Rainbow versus Washington Spirit. That game will be at 8 o'clock. And then we have Kansas City versus North Carolina Courage. That game will be at 10 o'clock. Um, finals will be on September 7th at 1 p.m. So with these games coming up, we, can, we can't wait to see the, the teams that will win this tournament. Also, it will give us an idea of which teams will be qualifying to the finals, and also we'll see who will lift up the championship at the end of the year. You can look for more scores and stats every week here at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, Monday night. Also, if you'd like to sponsor this segment, you can contact us via website or on the Cash App listed on your screen. Enjoy the rest of the show, and we'll see you here next week. Coyote McKinnon and company are ready to dress you in one of their most stylish, comfortable and attractive athletic gears this fall for you to achieve that desired athletic goal. Check out their online store today for your joggers, tank tops, bras, backpacks, sweatshirts and everything else you'll need to complete that look. It's Coyote McKinnon and company. We care. Welcome back. If you're now joining us, this is the Coach Kayo Show. Um, we're answering questions tonight. Um, we have some questions. Hopefully, you have more questions to ask um, about soccer and soccer related. Uh, we'll definitely appreciate it. Um, but please support. Please support our merch. Um, hopefully, this is giving you an opportunity to to share this live, to get more young people involved, um, get coaches involved, get parents involved. We know there's a lot of questions and there's not a lot of answers. So maybe it's always good to try something different. If you haven't tried something before, um, you really don't know. But if you've tried everything else and it and it and it's not working, then maybe there's a chance to try something else. You know, please support our merch. Um, you can check us out at kmsocacademy.com. Um, check out our store. Go to the top that says shop, and you can get whatever you need. Please support. Um, please support the movement. The movement is, you know, it's bigger than us. Is to uh, touch the hearts of young people all over this world. And there's a need. There's a need. So it's beyond. Um, it's beyond the norm. It's beyond. 
just uh, reaching to the top of the hill, but it's it's more about um, getting other people to the promised land. So when you help us, we're able to in turn help somebody else. You know, God bless us with something. He give us something that we could give it to somebody else so that they in turn could give it back to give it back to him and the process continues. So when you decide to when you decide to help um, the KMSA movement, know that you're um, by extension helping uh, some player somewhere. You're helping a person in some way or shape. So please do support the merch. Add it to that. Like I said, we're talking about questions. We're dealing with questions and answers tonight. And we know there are frequent questions that people ask within SACA um, that needs to be answered. So please, please, please do send your questions. We will answer it to the best of our ability. Um, if, you, if you wish, um, share a comment. Share a comment or just let us know that you are here. Um, and please do subscribe. Subscribe helps us a lot um, to reach other people, to reach more young people. You know, they have different people. They have different kids suffering with different things. And we might just be the voice uh, that they want to hear. That shouldn't be. Uh, that shouldn't be your choice necessarily, um, but it should be a choice to share because somebody might need to hear something we have to say. So please do subscribe to our channel on YouTube. It's Kyrie McKinnon and Co. Um, on YouTube. Follow me on Instagram, at Coach Kyle or Twitter. And then we have Facebook, Kyrie McKinnon. So share, share, share. Please let me know that you are here. Please let me know that you are here. I want to be able to have a conversation with you. I don't want to feel like I'm talking to a wall or I'm talking to a screen. Um, that That is very uncomfortable. I, I do that a lot in terms of uh, talking to myself. It's important because if you don't talk to yourself, somebody else will talk to you. And whatever you say or whatever you hear, is downloaded, is encoded, and it 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 kind of um, it, it it navigates, help you to navigate your day, your week, your month, um, your life. But now I'm here talking with you. I don't want to feel like I'm talking to you. I want to feel like I'm talking with you. So please um, do share. So I'll give you a, I have a small interruption here to tell you a bit more about who KMSA is. And maybe if you don't have a home, um, you might want to consider this might be a place uh, that you want to dwell. So the question is, who is KMSA? KMSA is a training academy uh, focused primarily on the development of individuals based on their pathway, based on where they want to be um, in their careers. And also, um, focus a lot on young players who uh, want to be introduced to the game and players who are at the fundamental stage making sure that we are orienting and reorienting um, the players on a consistent basis. Yeah, welcome back to the Coach Kayo Show. Kayo Day here. We, we're answering questions tonight. We're answering questions that you might have. And we have some questions and we will we will try to answer it to the best of our ability or ability, sorry. Um, but it's important to note that we are totally invested in, in, in our young people. We have a vested interest in empowering our young people based on the landscape. Um, I think there's less attention, there's a less there's less attention to the developmental aspect of the younger ones. I think uh, what I've seen is more is better. The more you have, 
um, there's there's this notion that there is um, it's really established and it's successful um, because more is better and and oftentimes though you 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 ask the question about school and one of the questions they ask is um, student to, to professor teacher ratio because they want to know that the attention would be given to them so that their learning uh, can increase but something about soccer um, it's not given the same respect uh, in terms of how it can impact your life uh, in a holistic way. I think school is is looked at in that way. Um, but sports generally, and for me, soccer has never been looked at looked at as a sport that can can have an impact on your life holistically. Um, but we. We show up to TV every Sunday and we look at players and and we are we are excited about their lives. Pretty much our day could go bad or good if our team lost or if our team won. But for some reason, here in the United States, when it when it comes to the young people, more is better. Because I'm just saying that based on experience, I was told uh, whether you have four and five or six or seven kids, you are not established. It's not about the content. It's not about um, what is being taught. Um, that is the only definition of established. How many, how many uh, players is on the field? So you have 30 players, 20 players, you really establish. But the person who is responsible for the development of, of the young people um, is not qualified to do so. And that is just facts. It don't mean that the person who have a desire to help or they don't have a love or passion for the game. But I learned the other day that, you know, development truly um, happens at an early stage. A lot of what we are doing now, if we if we look, we did it a lot when we were young. And some of the things we are not doing now, if we look back, we were doing it and somebody helped us to move away from that so we create better and new behaviors. So we have a vested interest in when it comes to development and, and especially the younger ones because we feel the best coaches or the most qualified coaches should be with the younger uh, players. Let me be, let me step back a little bit, not best, because sometimes when you say best, people think that, you know, it's, it's like you're better than somebody. I, I'm not saying you're better, but there's levels to everything. And when you're coaching, um, there is there is task that you must be able to fulfill to show your level of competency in order in order to move players from where they are to where they need to be. So when we talk about um, when we talk about our vision and what why this show is what it is is because we truly feel like this is our purpose because we're driven uh, we're driven by it every day. The energy, the commitment, the 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 discipline. Uh, to show up every day with the right energy, with the right motives, um, is what we do. So we don't just use this. We don't just talk about it loosely, um, but we are truly invested in it. Nevertheless, I think that every child, parents, coaches, organization, parents, coaches, parents, the players, they all, um, they all looking for answers. We know that to be true. They are all looking for answers. And hopefully we have we have the right questions. You know, we don't talk about that. We need good questions. We need right questions because it enables us to go in the right direction um, and solve problems. Now think about you looking for, you know, you're looking for a street and are you looking for a specific location within that street but you cannot you cannot ask the question the correct way because you are unsure 
based on the question that you ask, you you are literally giving that that person the power to give you direction based on the question you ask. And if you ask the question incorrect or it's not the right question, then you have to expect that you will have you might be directed in the wrong to the wrong place. So questions are very important and you must ask the right question because SAC is about solving problems, but more so it's about decision making. Um, and the decision making aspect there is to make sure that you're doing it with, uh, with autonomy because you're not using um, your conscious brain when you're playing. It's too much things um, uh, that you have to think about. And if you try to itemize those things, you'll be lost with the first thing. So the idea is for you to ask questions that you're able to encode things that you can more so use your perception rather than using your conscious brain. Hi, Melissa Sullivan. Good to see you. I hope all is well with you and the family. Um, continue to share. Yes, let me know that you are here and you might have questions. Um, you don't always have the luxury to ask questions. Um, because sometimes questions could make people uncomfortable and also sometimes questions can expose certain things. If you don't want to answer the question, then it's your choice. You don't have to answer the question. But you must ask the question, right? So when you ask good questions, it also makes sure that you instill long-term work in memory. That's what you do when you ask good questions. Because the answers you will download. Think about somebody who don't know that they don't know. So you ask a question, and because you don't know, whatever answers you get that speaks to your emotions or, or give you some sense of security or comfort, not necessarily the right thing, you will encode it, and your behavior will be a representation of it. So it's important to ask good questions, not just good questions. No, I don't want to say good questions. It's important to ask right questions. Right questions. Because a lot of people like good, but they don't like right. It's just good enough. But what is right takes a lot more. It takes, uh, you have to invest more. You have to work more. You have to spend less time um, sleeping, more time working, because you want to do what is right. Good is not good enough. You have to do right. So ask really good questions tonight, and hopefully we, you know, it, it helps to, you know, dictate your learning capacity or enhance your learning capacity so that you can truly maximize your potential. Because like I said, we're here to add value, we're here to impact, we're here to, we're here to inspire you to be the best version of yourself. Your question also allows us to be the best version of ourselves because we don't want to be fixed. You know, I don't want to be fixed. KMSA don't want to be fixed. We want to, we want to have this growth mindset. We want to always know there's something else we need to know. We always want to believe that there's something else out there that we need to get better at. But you do that through, you know, asking good, really good questions that, um, that helps you to, um, to think deeper. It stimulates the mind. When you have to think, it stimulates your mind. So a good question can force you to think, or a question could have the answer in it already. And I've seen it a lot where people's question already has the answer. So it don't force me to think. It just forced me uh, to run with my expectations and my understanding, okay? So I'm looking for the questions. If you have a question, like I said, feel free um, to, to send your questions. Or also, I want to know that you are here, and I want to know that you are 
I'm invested in youth development. And this is, listen, this is not just only for soccer players. Um, we don't just we don't just focus on just the sport because we understand the person plays the sport. You're not a different person when you play sports. You're not a different person when you step on the soccer field. It's an extension of who you are. If you lack discipline, you will lack discipline on the field. It's not a different brain you're playing with. You don't leave your intellectual brain at home and pick up your soccer brain and come to practice. But also, we you know, if you bring your intellectual brain, um, your 4.0 in, 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 in your GPA brain and think that that works in a soccer field, then you're mistaken. Because... You're not using your consciousness. You're not really using your conscious brain with on a soccer field. It's, everything is happening too fast. So you're actually using your perception, which we understand is knowledge. The more knowledge you have, the more perception you'll be able to have. So what you, if you know what you're looking at, knowledge, you will know what to look for. If you know what to look for, then you're able to use the perception better. If you have to consciously think, then the thing will happen before you can figure out what you need to do. That means you're now trying to solve a problem. The idea is to intercept the problem before it happens. That helps you to impact the game um, in a meaningful way. That is why you look at Messi and you look at Ronaldo and you look at all the big players in the world. They are consistent because they have knowledge of the game. Something that is not really invested in when it comes to youth development and soccer here. So you might want to ask some question about that. But like I said, we had we, we have some we have a few questions here that, you know we can dive into but i don't want you to feel left out so make sure that you are asking your questions so i have a question here that said why why you players do privates when they are in a club already wow that's a good question why you players do privates when they are in a club already? Well, first I will answer that question in this way. A lot of times when players, my experience uh, and what I've seen and what I know, a lot of players ask to do private because one, they're not getting enough playing time in their club. They're not getting enough playing time. And maybe the coach gave them an evaluation at the ending of the season, a written evaluation, telling them about all the things um, they don't do well. But were these things discussed? Um, did they have a plan in place to fix this thing during the season? Um, I don't think so. Because at the end of the season, they're, they're given this written evaluation about um, nothing objective, nothing really to prove what they're saying, but um, this, is, this is the expectation. You write up a set of words, um, but we understand a picture tell, uh, a picture tell a thousand words. So we know what we're able to see. We are better equipped to do or to change. Nevertheless, to the question, um, most people do private outside of their clubs because, A, they're not getting enough playing time. And they're uncertain about their position next year, especially when you have blue, white, orange, red, and you have all these different teams in the same age group. And you could easily be dropped down. 
And oftentimes, you being dropped down, there's no clear criteria for why you're a blue player and why you're a gold player. Because gold or whatever seems, or silver or whatever, or team one, team two, team three, whatever they name it, um, is there clear criteria for why you are a A player and why you are a C player? Oftentimes, it's just the eye test. Or maybe it's just some random thing more physical, you know, half speed, you know, all things that are important to soccer. But we know at the younger age, it's, it's not necessarily that because what they can do now, they can't do it. You don't know if they can do it when they are 13 and 14. But this is why people do private. So if you coaches are concerned and, and wonder why your players seek to go do privates, with other coach, coaches because, they one, they don't think they're getting enough playing time, and two, they look at your evaluation, and obviously you, you you know, there might not be no practices in the summer for them to get ready, or it might not be enough practices in the winter because space is a problem, etc. They have to go and look for extra work. They have to go and look for extra work because they they already they already got the information on the paper that listen you didn't perform well you know and there's a team below you and you might be the player going down. So now the parents are a bit of uh, you know they're in frustration mode or they're in desperation. They're just seeking out who could help you so that you could be ready to stay on the blue team. So uh, this is a this is a big reason why. They have those two things happening. One, you didn't get enough playing time. Or two, you're on, you might be on the list or you might think you're on the list to be put down. So you need to, you need to get some privates in. Or kids might just feel like they want to maintain their position in the team. And the coach gave them a few things that they need to work on. And they need to come and, and, and do such. So, and that happened because parents are not fully, you know, fully aware or, or they don't have the answers um, on what development is in the youth development environment. Um, because a lot of times it's, it's performance base, not developmental base. So hopefully um, that question was answered. Because I think there's a, there's a bit of conflict there with with teams and and coaches who do um, private sessions. There's some there's some discrepancies there, but that is I believe that is the, one of uh, some of the reasons why players seek out uh, private coaches um, to help them to get better think they will get better because three months of three months of practices and games have not improved you based on the evaluation sheet. Uh, but two weeks within the summer or a week and then you go away for vacation and come back will will help you to develop and get you ready. Yes, I'm looking for those questions. Feel free, feel free. I have a few, but like I said, I want to, I want you, I want you to be involved. Um, please do check out our website, KM Soccer, KM Soccer um, for any um, anything you might be interested in, anything that you want to learn. You might be looking for a home. You might be looking for an environment. You would have tried everything, and and it seemed, and it's not working out in 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 the way you want it to work out. Yes, excuse me. See, you know, check us out. Um, we are content based program. We believe in in content. We believe in 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 being open. And being frank and being honest, because you can't hide, you know. In soccer, you can't hide. It don't matter what you what you say, how how well you speak, or how 
how grand your program look. Sack is a game that you cannot hide. You have to show up on that green, and that green is the is the extension of what you're doing on a daily basis. So there's no secret in the game. You know, everybody wants to be so secretive. Secretive about what? What is the secret? What is the secret? It don't matter what you do. It don't matter whatever you're doing, make sure that you're showing up on the field. Make sure those principles and, and the technical expectations and the, the physical expectations, all those things, make sure that it's showing up on the field that presents that you are on the right path. So there's no there's no secret in this game. I guess I have all the questions then. Um, how do children learn? I think there's, there's, there's many answers to this. Um, but before I go there, um, I, would, I will answer that question a little bit later. I think there's a better question here uh, that I want to answer now. What development looks like? Because we just talk about private, talk about private coaches and, and, and kids going to private coaches. Um, what development looks like? That's a good question. Because when you talk about development, uh, people are like, so we hear the same thing over and over and over and over. And, and you know, people say the same thing about development and they use the word development, but what is that really? To the point where uh, parents who go to 9 to 5 from Monday to Friday show up on Sunday and they believe they know what is development. They are, they, 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 they either say that the kids are not getting better or they say they're getting better. Based on what? What are you basing that on? Once again, an eye test if you didn't give the ball away, if you if you dribble past somebody, if you score two goals, if the team won, these are all things that we use as measurables for a child is developing or not. But that is not what development looks like. That's not what it looks like. It's about performing the key qualities. There are key qualities based on your age, uh, based on the age and stages of um, your development. It could be a chronological age, or it could be a biological age. So there are specific key, key qualities that you need to know. This is why you need to have competent coaches um, who understand there's an expectation at every age. And not just from the chronological side of things, but from the biological side of things. Because biologically, you might have to have a special um, developmental plan for that athlete. Because they might not be at the same level with the other players within their age group. So it's a bit more deeper than you seeing a goal score or somebody dribbling or passing. What are the key qualities? Okay, And then you have to have measurables based on some key performance indicators. So based on your child is this age group, uh, they have cognitive things that they must be able to do and they have technical things that they must be able to do. Physical things, they must be equipped with. And psychological things, they must be able uh, to demonstrate. So when you look at those key qualities, now you identify with uh, whatever measurables you want to use with a clear definition of what that looks like. This is why words cannot speak um, enough or words cannot be loud enough when it relates um, to evaluating a player. It's a con job. And it's reckless. Because words cannot do um, it cannot do the service of uh, telling and showing, more so showing. Because these indicators, you must be able 
for the person to see it because what you see if you if you can see a lot while you're looking if you can see a lot while you're looking at less your brain and your perception increases its speed so seeing it is very important so development um, must be about first understanding uh, these key qualities and having key performance indicators with clear measurables so that you can identify uh, with objective data if a child is, is moving forward or they're standing still or they're going backwards. And sorry to say that might just be you, the coach, responsible for that. I say solely the coach because if the coach encouraged bad behavior, if the coach if the coach encouraged that the players could go for vacation for a whole two weeks or ten days, and show show up and 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 still have to get their playing time because the paperwork says you have to play fifty percent, then I mean that's what you will get. You'll get the sideline full of coaches. And development will be compromised. So, if you don't know, how will you know? If you don't know, how will you know? You've got to ask good questions. That's something to think about. So, this is a good question. Uh, I hope it was answered uh, to the best uh, so that you can understand, actually. You know, it could be deeper, but we don't have we don't have four hours here, so we'll go. There's no questions. Are we scared to answer, ask questions? I know you have a lot of questions. Maybe we're worrying about the answer. I'm just gonna give you an honest answer. If, if it's if it's not if it's not true, then it's not true. It's an honest answer, though. Um, it's to the best of my ability. All right, let's go to the next question, which was, how do children learn? It's all about the environment that you put your child in um, and, and how they, and don't let us use, uh, it, they need a good environment. And everybody says that. What What is a good environment, though, when it relates to learning? You know, it's for us. It's 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 an environment that has a clear vision, um, and a, and a clear idea of the 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 person in charge have a clear idea of the soccer. What do they want to see? Is it with clarity? Which leads you to having a curriculum. And curriculum must not just be one curriculum for a whole club. <laughs> Curriculum must be based also on the age that you're working with because there are different expectations there. Especially when you have a club with varying talent, with uh, different levels. You have kids who are serious and you have kids who are there just because they have money. That, that is the truth. You have kids who the parents just don't want them to stay home playing video games. So let me just get you involved in soccer. Then you have the same team with a child who live, breed, and everything soccer. How does a curriculum that is set for everybody work for those two different players? You're not, you're not Barcelona or you're not Real Madrid where the expectation is clear. It's pay to play. So a lot of times people are, are taking kids because it fits the roster, but not necessarily the soccer idea. So here lies some problems. So you have to have clear a clear curriculum, sorry, for the age that you're working with, for the age group that you're working with. A good environment is an environment that understands the international trends and the trends in the game 
a good environment is understanding um, the culture. And culture is the worst behavior you're willing to accept. Culture is not saying this is how the kids stay. Like this is how they behave. This is how the parents behave. So that is this is this is what we have to do. No, culture is not a solid thing. It's a fluid thing. You build culture every day. Had a great coach. Um, I think one of the smartest and brightest minds within soccer, Mr. Paul Shaw. Shout out to him. Um, very good educator, very good teacher. Um, and, and I got something from him. He said, culture beat rules. <laughs> culture beat rules. Culture is something that everybody must embrace. <laughs> See rules. People like to break rules. You say what? The 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 sterner the sterner the punishment, the desperate the thief. You want culture because it forms an identity. It forms a behavior where everybody come together and understand we're here on one mission. Clubs are filled with too many rules. And policies and those things are always compromised because money involved. So you need a good environment. And we're talking about what a good environment is. It needs a, it needs a curriculum. It, you need to understand the trends within the game. Those, the curriculum actually help you to establish a, a, a better understanding of, one, your training methodology your coaching methodology. Those things are clear. They're not going day by day. There's a system that is set in place for development, for growth. If those things are not clear and you're not asking those questions, um, how difficult it is to move your child from where they are to where they need to be. A lot of you moving, but you're moving because the meetings the meetings are about, you know, if we don't move the child, they're going to leave the program. And, you know, you know, we need to maintain this 14 kids in this team or this 15 kids in this team. That is the discussion. So you're feeling all excited about, yeah, I move up or, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I got him. Um, they're giving me more playing time and all kind of thing. It's not because of, not because you're developing. Not because you're learning. You ask the question, how do players learn? It's not because you're learning. It's because, you know, we need to maintain, we need to maintain that among the kids in this team. Because if we don't do it, we know they will go down the road. They will, they will jump ship. <laughs> Maybe you have some questions though. So I'm, 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 uh, just a short interruption to bring something tactically to you so that maybe you learn something from it. Because of this, and because this player 10 is forcing in this direction, we will ask the 11 to be a bit deeper, to close this space for the seven so that the three can actually play halfway between the seven and the two like this. So the 11 could always take this, this pass away. Even if they try to play a long ball across there, give the 11 enough time to drop in. Or it gives the four, the five, and the, the slide over, still keeping the 11 here in the event of an intercept. Now you have all this space. Welcome back, Coach Kayo Show here. Kayo Day with you. I hope that was helpful. Um, ready to attack your positioning in defense, supposed to set you up for what you want to do um, within the transition to offense. Um, we got a few more questions about four. Four questions, if you don't have any questions. Um, and if you want to dive a bit more deeper into some of these questions a bit later, um, feel free um, to use the number just above uh, my head here um, to or, or um, the website 
to get in contact um, with us to help you, to add value, not help you. Uh, don't like that word. Uh, to add value. So, yes, we have a question here from Vargas. Where would change have to start in youth soccer, youth soccer system in America to become better at development at developing players consistently? Great question. Um, it starts from U.S. soccer, um, and they have a uh, they have a task to 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 do such. Um, I know in other parts of the world, more developed. Uh, countries in the world, you know, the federation and the clubs and 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 the academies get together and they they have a strategic plan of how they will develop the game because they believe um, everybody benefits if the game is going in a direction uh, and the game is evolving in a way where it's more attractive, where people are more invested in it. This is why. Um, this is why people are so invested in their TVs every Sunday. They don't they don't play. They have never played, but they love the they want to watch, they bet their hard earned money on the game and all these manner of things. So it has to start uh, from the federation, but it also needs the it needs the cooperation of um the different personalities that you know run these leagues and run these programs to understand the game need to be going in one direction at this point in time the game is going in 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 different directions and it will take while the federation has the responsibility to do that it will take um, the cooperation of all the stakeholders to get on board and, and say, listen, we need the game to be aligned and to be narrow where there's a path uh, for everyone to climb. And this is why, um, um, Vargas, this is why a lot of players who have potential, they get left behind and they're not, and they're not given um, opportunities. As talented as you are, um, you stand a chance of never getting an opportunity because there's not one clear path to what is needed uh, to get all the way to that level when you have 50 different leagues and none of them are connected. And then there's there's no regular... Um, what do you say? The word is in my mind. There's no demotion, I'll say that. There's no demotion and promotion. They can because the quality is, is, is all over the place. So you might bring somebody in who might make you lose money. <laughs> so it's a lot to go wrong, but to answer that question, I think it really starts with the Federation trying to streamline something that is so narrow um, that forces or encourage, better word, encourage people to be uh, to be more cooperative in terms of streamlining a narrow way in which in which we in which we we play the game. That will allow for them to truly understand where progression is happening. I I think they're doing trying to do it, Adam, with soccer education they're trying to um, to raise more competent coaches but the struggle is real the struggle is real because um, there's there's a lot of politics within uh, within soccer that the only thing could eradicate that is having this oneness and the federation now could start putting stipulation in place where you have to follow this like you have to have competent coaches within these programs you can't just show up and talk about developing players and you're not qualify and you're not going to qualify qualify yourself. That is an issue because now it comes down to relationships. If you know somebody and I don't know somebody, you get the players to go somewhere, but no development has happened, but it looks good because maybe you're benefiting from what I am able to do for you. And then somebody will say, well, you're not doing nothing, but yet you're the one with the competency. 
so it, it it's a it's a lot happening there but that's 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 my answer hopefully uh, it it was helpful helpful for you yes the questions start coming yes send your questions i will answer to the best of my ability so while we wait for 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 another question which i believe will come you speak it into speak it into fruition and it will happen okay is private session good wow this is a good question is private session good here is my answer absolutely no and absolutely yes let me explain let me explain please At Chemist, say we don't even use the word private sessions because that's why I said no. It must be seen as an IDP, Individual Development Plan, because it must be connected um, to a clear game model. So what you call privates, obviously you call it one-on-one. -on -one. But you can have a one on one, but it must be an IDP because it must have a it, it must be associated to a game model. Right? So that's why I say yes or no, because based on context, you know, you could say you could say private, but it's it's IDP, it's it could be looked at the private, but almost that's why I said no and yes, because if it's not an IDP, which it which is attached to a game model, then it don't make no sense. So you can't you can't just go and do privates. It also must be linked. If you have a game model, then it will be linked to a positional profile. So the there are clear expectations there when it relates to what a player need to be doing outside of the ages and stages uh, of the development, positional wise positional wise and if it's not about position wise because of your age then it has to be about those um, um, technical expectations based on the age so those things have to be clear uh, before we start talking about doing privates if you're just showing up and you want to, I want to shoot harder and I want to, I want to dribble. I want to dribble faster because I know coaches will pray, pray and show up and they're like, oh, um, they call them on the phone and say, listen, I want you to do some private with my kid. And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to do private with the kid. And then they show up to the field and, and they're asking the parents, what do you want the child to work on? That is a private session. And I say, no, it is not good. <laughs> because it needs to be, a, it needs to be linked to a game model, which talk about principles and, and sub principles and, and, and it's deeper and deeper. Um, and to your positional profile, if you are that age and stage of your development, if you're not, then it must have these technical psychological things clear clearly outlined that obviously need time and and can be done in a week and then you go on a holiday and come back you know so you need coaches with competencies who understand um, the right questions to ask not literally asking the question but also from a situational standpoint they're able to ask the right questions because the game will also ask questions of you. So you just can't call somebody on the phone and say you want to do private. It's not good. And I know it might be convenient because it might be ten, might be thirty dollars or forty dollars, but you will get a forty dollars return return of nothing. So I all want to jump in and you want to ask questions. So what is he asking? I know a few parents that have tried various clubs and, you know, and top club, you put it in uplifted commas. And they feel that their child is not getting better. Should they stay at the club because they paid? What should they do? Tough question. First thing I would ask the, the, the parents, what is better? That was the first thing I would ask them. 
is better what you think is better and if what you think is better what what is your competency level to determine what is better or not so if you don't know what that is that means you're not asking the right questions now better is very expensive if you go to certain academies within this very country you will pay thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars because they understand the expectations and they're not going to waste their time and energy with people who cannot bring a return to them. So what they what you invest in them is for the resources that they have that can take you to a place where it will double what you're giving them. So they have to benefit something from it. So if you are only doing... so. To answer that question, all if if a parent is only in a program because of convenience, if they're in, excuse me, if they only in that program because it's a it's a nice travel for them, is is not too much. If they're in that program because they don't want to be burdened down with with all of the um, <clears throat> sorry all of the added. Um, the other things that come with development that they don't have to deal with, yeah, they are laying the wrong, they're in the wrong place if they want their child to develop. Anything good comes with a sacrifice, and it's always an uphill task. I said that a couple moons ago. You know, there's one thing about this life. If you want to do the wrong thing, it takes no energy. If you feel like you want to do the wrong thing and it's it's tempted enough, you'll do it. To not do that very thing is the hardest thing you will ever have to do in your life. If somebody wants to destroy your character, if somebody wants to embarrass you, if somebody wants to, to expose you, if people want to do all kinds of things, they will just do it easy. They, will, they, they won't even think about it. But those very people will not tell the world how what you're doing well. They were saying, ah, don't worry with that. Yeah, let's see if it work out. Nah. Oh, in a year it would end. They, people will find every excuse to not do the very thing. But if it's something bad, they will do it immediately. They won't have to think about it. And they will have many other voices behind them saying, yeah, do it. Go ahead. It's the best thing to do. So my point is the wrong thing always is very convenient. And it's very comfortable. So if that is how you as a parent feel within a program, then you're not there for your child's development. You're there for you. So definitely that's a decision you have to make. Are you there for you or are you there for your child development? Because if it's only about convenience, it's not for the child. It's for you. Because you're going to stay there under bad circumstances just because it makes sense. So, yeah, hope I answer your question, sir. I got a few more. I got a few more. I got about two more. Stay with me. Bear with me. These questions are coming in late. I will stay for a few to make sure I give you a chance to, 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 to ask your questions. It's telling my child, this is a question, it's telling my child what to do on a soccer field bad? Absolutely yes. It's bad, 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 and more bad. There's not enough bad to put into that, into this statement. I just watch a youth game, and one team, the coach can't even talk. Because his sideline is filled with coaches. Okay. Seriousness now. It is very destructive. I'll tell you why. You are actually destroying your own child's development by doing that on the sidelines. And oftentimes it's the people who think they know. If you really know, you wouldn't do that. 
if you really think you know the game, like you want the other parents to know, like you you play high school and you coach a rec program and you, you watch a lot of soccer, so you obviously know. Listen, all right. Usa, bring it down a little bit. People who behave like that on the sideline think they know. They don't know. Because if you know, if you actually know, you will know that you are compromising your own child's development and progress. And I expect you to be moving to another club soon. Take some notes. Every single parent who oftentimes are the loudest on the sideline giving instructions, they always leave the club looking for another club. And they take that same behavior to the, to the next club. And by the time you know it, the child at 7, 8, 9, 10 already play for like five clubs already. Because they don't understand what is the problem. So permit me to help you so you understand what you're doing is very destructive. I understand you might think the coach know what he's doing, and he, but you are doing worse than what the coach is doing. You are absolutely destroying your own child's sanity and mental, mental health by doing that. Why, why is it dangerous? Because information is not learning, sir. Information is not learning, ma'am. That is what you're doing at the side of the field on Sunday. You're just spewing out information. Oh, now they're gonna be now. You guys gonna be mad with me. That's okay though. Nobody learns from information. They learn because they have the inter information which moves to knowledge. Knowledge is the ability to internalize the information to make it your own. And that process of internalization is based on the individual and their learning capacity, which leads them to better behaviors and actions. So knowledge allows them to download more perceptions that mean they're able to know what to look for after knowing what to look at. That happens in training. So if you have not gone to a training session and you have not picked up a training plan and you have not you have not you have not put the players through the paces how could you come on Sunday telling the child to pass to run to get up the field to to get come back to do all of these things you are giving information you are compromising the ability of your own child to learn. That is why you're running from club to club. The coaches have all week to figure this thing out. And they are struggling. How you believe that you could show up on one day and the kids must follow you and oftentimes you only talking to your child about what to do. How is that connected to the other kids? <laughs> oh my. Please. It's destructive. I'm not trying to stop you from talking, but support your kids. Good. Good effort. Keep going. Don't give up. These are these are powerful statements to your child. But the other things, the tactical things and, and the instructional things, please, please, you are part of destroying the game. This is why people keep blaming everything else. And if you coaches are, are okay with that, and I know coaches are not okay with that, but they take it anyway because, you know, the money you have to come. You yelling at your child, you're not changing nothing. All you're doing 
is disconnecting the child from the process of learning. I encourage you to stop. But I, I think I have another question here just now. Let me pop it up again. Aimani, how does an athlete know if they are ready for a big trials? And if when you go for a, an example overseas and don't make it, should you stay and keep trying smaller teams? Oh, athlete, I answer the first part of your question. Oh, athlete, know they're ready for big trials. First, you have to know what is the ex, what are the expectations. First, you have to die second. First, you have to know what are the expectations of you as a player, based on your age and stage of development. And you have to have clear measurables, and you have to have someone with competency to make sure that they are giving you objective data based on these trends so that you are equipped to even go on a trials. The other part of that is, if I'm going on a trials, I have to know the environment in which I'm going. So I must be knowledgeable about the environment and the culture of the environment and know what the expectations are because they will have a game model. And they will have positional expectations. They will have player profile. They will have the player profile expectations and they will have the positional profile expectations. You have to fit those things. So if somebody just taking you overseas they, and, and, and say, go try out, go on at the days for those things. You could have done that maybe 10, 15 years ago. Players, coaches, and organizations who are at the top level and professional level, they have clear, they have a clear expectation. They have clear expectations also. They have a clear identity. The coaches understand the idea of the game. So you are not coming there because they hope you, you look good. You're coming there because you fit something that they are interested in. Now, if you go there and, and you don't make it, should you continue? Yes, you should continue, continue in the right way. And the right way is what I just said. Because not everybody will be a fit. It don't matter. You don't, you not making a professional team is not, not necessarily because you're not good. You just don't fit the idea of the coach or the organization. You just have to know exact, exactly where you fit. It might be a relationship thing. It might just be the coach have other girls or other, other male players that he trusts or she trusts at this point in time. So it's very crazy how we define good and bad and all of these things. We have to be, we have to be more objective with that kind of discussion. I hope I answer your question. So I got, I got one more question here. So if you know you have your questions, come on. I'm probably going to do two more. Probably going to do two more. I have a next one here. Can, I, can you train three days and get to the next level? Okay. Um, absolutely no. You cannot train three days and get to the next level. That's four and a half hours. We have 24 hours in one day. Four and a half hours in an entire week. You know. You need to be frequently uh, connected to situations physically, tactically, technically, psychologically. Um, to rewire your brain to encode more uh, information that becomes knowledge, that form your perception. Uh, because you cannot play with your conscious brain. We talk about unconscious competences, the ability to make decisions. And decision, decisions in soccer is about the autonomy. 
So less days means that you are being distracted by other things that stifles the learning ability, that stifles your long-term working memory to play the game with, with, with your unconscious brain. It's conscious, but because you download it, is your unconscious competence because you're conscious. You're not sleeping and playing. You're wide awake. But they call it the unconscious competence is because you have done it so many times. You have the experience. You have put in the hours that you encode it in your brain. And if you learn to be narrow and you know what to look for, there's something about your body and the mechanics allow you to work on that memory. So if you want to just show up three days a week and go home and eat pizza and talk about you want to be at the next level, okay. I wish you the best. It's not happening. So why you don't go to school for one hour a day? Why? And school is solving problems. They have a curriculum, they have a syllabus, and they, they give you certain things, and you have to go retain it, and you have to remember it, and you have to work it out. But you're using your problem-solving brain. You're able to sit and be conscious about what you need to do. In a soccer game, it is fluid. It's ebbs and flows. It's going from attacking to defend, defend to attacking, and that can happen in a second, and you have to transition your brain from one moment to the other. So you you are, you, are, you have to use a certain skill. And it's what you encode. So you go to school for eight hours a day, five days a week, to solve problems, but you want to do four and a half hours a week to make better decisions. Okay? Okay, it's not happening. Sorry. You might as well just be happy with your level and have fun. Don't talk about no next level. It's not going to happen. Sorry. Okay, we're winding down. I got five minutes more. Oh, I have another question. There's so many people doing it um, with a certain way, for example, training three days, like you said, games in the weekend and tournaments. Why don't we have more youth national teams coming from the East Coast side? One, we don't play enough soccer. Because we have winter to deal with. And if you winter, most kids are doing once a week or twice a week. And some of them not even working with their team. They have to work with another team because the days are compromising the whole process. Um, the other part, development is compromised because uh, a lot of times coaches and organization have to water down what they do because people will leave. And then they left with all these these fees and all that all these dome and all these expenses to deal with. So sometimes um, the prior the priority get um, the priority get compromised because it can't be about soccer fully. It, it, they want it to be about soccer because that's what they're selling, but it can't fully be about the developmental model because to do that. You're going to have to be willing to downsize or you're going to have to be willing to lose some people, which affects the business. So that means a child might very well be in a team that's not supposed to be in that team because they pay, they pay five months ahead of time for the next season. Now tryout is happening now for big academies. Why? Because it's a hustle to, to get players. And it's pay to play. <laughs> it says hustle to get players. So while the season is going on, people have to be hustling with tryouts because they, they could guarantee five, four players leaving because they didn't have enough playing time based on what? Based on egos, based on all of these things that have nothing to do with the developmental model. This hinders our players who are talented, you go to the field, you see a lot of talented kids in New Jersey. You see a lot of talented players in New Jersey. 
I just watch a youth game. I'm not going to call the team. But I saw about, about nine, ten talented young girls. Young. Just, just talented. They're doing amazing things for their age. But I know by the time they get to 13, 14, they will be out. Because that group of girls, four or three of them will leave because four or three of them not getting enough playing time as one or two of them. And they will not stay the course and develop, develop the process. So, I mean, this is why this is this is why we're not producing enough national team players because we're not in in this East Coast era enough time and patience is not given um, to develop. Any more questions? I think I have one more, but before we go to that one more, I don't want to miss out on my nudge, uh, my nudge of the week, because it's very important to highlight people when they are doing awesome things when nobody really expects them to do so. So here goes the nudge of the week, and hopefully I have a question or two before I leave. Yes, Mr. Desmond Dynamite, Dynamite Amsterdam, all the way from Guyana. Take a big nudge for being the first medalist in boxing. Keep going, sir. I hope that this will encourage um, people to truly invest because oftentimes we, we go, we do well, and it stops right there. There's no progression. And then... Uh, then we you just left to the wayside and the young ones coming behind you are not inspired uh, because of what they what they see happening to you so i hope that we don't drop the ball in this one and we continue uh, to expose this 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 young man to uh, more opportunities all over the world to continue to develop so that we could have another world champion someday uh, kudos to you Keep doing what you're doing. I hope that the blessings rain down on you and your family and you continue to, to succeed on this path and on this journey. Take a big nudge from Kay, from the Coach Kyle show. All right? All right. Any other questions? You are sure? I could stay five minutes more. I know you might have a question. It is the best time to ask it. Some reason I think I have I think I have some decent answers so far, um, but if it don't change you in no way or shape, it was the worst answers because I'm here to add value to you, not to to sound good, um, to help you to change your behavior and move you from where you are to where you need to ultimately be. Be careful that people don't accept you as you are but push you to be what you can become. Don't be comfortable. Be uncomfortable. To be a winner, to be a successful athlete within soccer, you have to learn to be uncomfortable and you have to learn to accept that you will be vulnerable sometimes. If you're going to learn, you have to be vulnerable. Everybody wants to learn, but nobody wants to be taught. I'm happy when I don't know something because I know the only thing that could happen is I will know. And once I know, okay, what then? All right. So I have a final question. If you guys don't have no questions, maybe a question pop up with the, with this question um, because a lot of people ask and we must address. To not address is to hide. What makes KMSA better? They use the word. What makes KMSA better? Wow. First off, we are not better than no one else. We are not better. 
And we're not here to be better. To be better is to compete. Why are we competing? Who are we competing with? The only word, only way we can use better is, can we better ourselves? Absolutely. That's the only word, uh, that's the only way that word can be used in context with KMSA. But we're not better. We're different. And we strive and we look forward to being different. We look different anyway. So being different shouldn't be being different shouldn't be no surprise to no one. But we aim to be different, as we should. Why should I want to be a copy of anybody else? Or why should I want to, uh, to follow every step that someone makes? That means I'm not creating no step. For the people who want me to create a step. Because the father created a step and he said, follow me. And then he put different things in all of us so that we ultimately could return all of these things back to him. So why should I want to follow what somebody is doing? So being different should be something that everyone, um, every single person wants to embrace. We're not better. We're different. So we ask, um, what makes us you know what 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 forces us to take these position i see it as a compliment when people say that you know what makes you, what makes you guys so what makes you guys so this and so that everybody else is doing this why you have to do why you have to do this different and i'm like that is a compliment cuz if everybody's doing the same thing how come you haven't gotten to where you want to get to yet if it's so good and it's so right. If you're so uh, distraught by our difference, so then why, why are you moving from different places to come to, to KMSA to be the same? So you want the same thing that I've not worked out for you all this time. I don't think that is, and I don't know, but I don't, I don't think that might be a smart decision. Like if you've done something all this time and it's it, it's not working out for you, why would you say, why would you question our difference? Why would you question our difference if this, if, and you want us to be the same, but same have not worked for you? So oftentimes I I see it as a, a, a as a as a compliment when say to say well everybody else doing this who you guys think you are no we're nothing we're just different which we we supposed to be we already look different already so we should be different but I'll tell you why we're different because you you ask the question uh, the question is asked. <laughs> Many times, you know, we're different because we have managed to distinguish uh, between performance and learning. I think that's the most, I don't think, I don't know if you thought it was something crazy and major. We have managed to distinguish those two things. What is performance and what is learning? And performance is nowhere in the developmental model. Because if you understand stages, ages and stages, and how and this process of growing uh, to get to the ultimate level of competition and winning and performance, you will understand that performance has no place when it relates to development. It's about learning. Why? Because what you're doing at 12, you might not be able to do at 15. The expectations are totally different for a 12-year-old to even a 13-year-old, to a 14-year-old, to a 15-year-old, to a 17-year-old. So that means you should always be in learning mode if you are a developmental player. Performance is by is day-to-day, game-to-game, training-to-training, 
It's no long term. It's not established for long term working memory. So performance is I start here. It don't work out for me. I change the whole thing. Why? Because I'm not winning. That is performance. So we have managed to distinguish between those two things. And we understand there's an adaptation that is needed for this process to work. That means it needs time and it needs patience. Again, you say you want to play at the highest level, but who are the people educating you what that requires of you? What is required of you, sorry? Who are the people? We can't adapt without spending time, without spending hours. How do we teach our kids to adapt by doing something one time, two times, three times? Even to brush their teeth. We get up every day and we take them to the sink every day until they figure out how to do it on their own. Adaptation. And we have to give that time to people. We have to give that time based on who is standing in front of us. We cannot dictate. We cannot dictate that. We have to know the current behavior of who is standing in front of us. And we have to give them the time to adapt. Excuse me. To, 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 to develop the key qualities. So that's the thing that makes us different. That's all we do. We just distinguish between what is performance and what is learning. And if you're in a performance-based environment and you're supposed to be a developmental player, that's why, okay, that's why it's such a, it's such a hard process. Nevertheless, I think I've kept you guys here long enough. I hopefully... Um, Hopefully these, these questions were helpful. Anonymous. Are all these youth leagues ruining the developmental process? Oh, I got one. Um, yes. It's ruining it. Because it, it don't have a clear pathway to move into the national team, which is the ultimate goal, to play for your country. You play, you play, you play soccer because... If you're truly invested and the amount of money that's been invested in soccer, you should give the coaches at the national team more headache. There's so many kids in this country playing soccer. Yet we see the struggles with even with within CONCACAF. Then we want to blame the national team coach. How he's just he's just a national team coach. He's literally working with what you sent to him. He don't work with the player every week. But hey, Ben Alto have to go. He's not good. He's, all of these things, all these things. We want to blame the national team coach. Where are these players coming from? And if the the youth coach, well, oh, he's worse. He don't know nothing. How, where, where do you players coming from? <laughs> so, yes, all of these leagues are ruining everything when it really is because they're not connected to the top of the puzzle. They're not connected. They're all different things. You don't, you, you can't sit down and say, if I, if I, if I do well here, I'll go to this division. If I do this, all of these leagues got different divisions. So when are you going to get to the right division to say, oh boy, well, yes, my child is on the path of at least being seen by a scout to play for the national team or play professionally. In that context, it's ruining it. Because it's not, it's, it's not clearly aligning a part for us to, 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 for our young people to follow. This is why the kid in the community club could never have a dream of playing on a national team. Yeah, they probably have to move and go to a different state. Or they have to go overseas and come back because the national team coach not coming here. 
they're not coming into the communities to look for no diamond in no rough. Good try. They're not. Who fault is that? You telling me they don't have pro, you they have talented, really good kids living right in these communities. But it but because nothing is connected and aligned to getting you all the way up to the top, then you know you left to just have a dream. And if you, even if you have a goal, then you can't even find the consistency because three days a week. And then you go home, no reflections, no nothing. No meeting with the coach for the whole season. You haven't seen yourself play one time. <laughs> Come on. Yes, it is ruining it. From a soccer perspective. Because you don't know what you you don't know what is your next step. You don't know what is your next step. You don't have a clear path. So being seen as a normal player, as a normal player with with person with talent, and then anybody could coach. So added to that, you could go and play in a, in a tournament with the, with 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 the worst set of players. When I said the worst set of players, the competition level. Sorry, the competition level. As they're so vastly different that you could win and then you're able to sell that on Instagram and players will follow you. So, yeah, it's ruining everything. Anyway, um, thanks for being with me. Thanks for putting up with this um, show. Hopefully, it was helpful to you as it was helpful to me. And continue to grow, continue to learn. Um, thank you again for all of you that subscribe to the channel and, and, and share um, the show. Please continue to do so. And I pray that, you know, the blessing will return to you a hundredfold. Thank you again and have a good night and an enjoyable week. Stay safe. A wide variety of episodes are already available, chock full of incredible insight from two qualified experienced coaches. Here are some previews of eye-opening quotes. Lots of players think they need to drive an hour or two hours to get good training. Because community clubs do not feel, most of them, if not all of them, don't feel the responsibility to provide every child the best opportunity. This is for players to have fun, so why not name it Rec? An elite league shouldn't be based on teams. It should be based on the coaching there's no integrity in the game. It's all about business. It's it, That's all it is. There's nothing about soccer first. Everything is about giving the athletes an experience. We hope you are available to tune in. New episodes every Monday night.